we have this. <clears throat> what is this, you might ask? Well, it's a conglomeration of a bunch of parts that I've collected over the years. Um, and I actually forgot that I had this Variac. This is a 10 amp Variac that came out of a uh, plasma cutter that I scrapped. And uh, I forgot I had it. <clears throat> I know I said in the previous video that I didn't have a Variac. I have a little one, I think it's a 2 amp. It came out of uh, shoot, I, oh, it came out of an AC power supply that I had, um, but I forgot I had this 10 amp Variac and the circuit breaker. This is a 10 amp circuit breaker. Came out of the same um, plasma cutter. This is a 300 volt AC voltmeter that came out of the uh, Newark plate maker that I got from where I work and scrapped. I don't remember where I got this ammeter from. Um, I have two that are uh, 150 amp ammeters and one 15 amp ammeter, and I can't remember what they came out of. I think there was two 15 amps, and one of them was no good, so I threw it away. Pilot light, power switch, both came out of the Newark plate maker. Um, standard IEC power in, receptacle, don't remember where I got those from, they were just hanging around power switch, another switch out of the new arc plate maker, and a, a light bulb socket. <clears throat> so what I basically, and I had bought this rack mount, uh, the, the face plate, the sides, and the back came as a kit. It didn't have a top and bottom, so I actually made these uh, from a larger panel that came off from a telephone switch that I got from work. You can see where, uh, I, liked it, I liked it because it had these louvers in it but it was way too wide. It was probably oh, three feet wide. So I cut it uh, to the right depth. I actually cut this whole cabinet off. This was a, a 20 inch deep uh, uh, rack mount chassis and I didn't want it that deep. So you, the idea is you can cut it off to any size you want and then you just you can fit it into these holes here in the side of the chassis. But anyway, I made the top and the bottom out of covers for an old phone switch that I got and I just pop riveted um, a small angle here and a wider angle here just to give it support and I painted them black they were kind of a, a cream colored crinkle finish so basically what you've got this is power power light amp draw and voltage and this is the variable voltage zero to about 140 or 145 volts <clears throat> and then on the back, we have power in, power out, the switch, and a light bulb socket. So what the light bulb socket is for is you can screw a bulb in here, and that will give current limiting to whatever you plug into this. Well, if the switch is facing the outlet, it's straight through to the outlet. The bulb socket is not in the circuit. And the middle is off, nothing gets out, and to the left is bulb is in the series with this outlet. So if you want to do a, a test on an old radio or something, you can plug it into here, put a bulb in here, put the switch to the left, so now the bulb would be in the circuit. If the radio would draw 100 watts, you put a 100 watt bulb in there, and that way it will uh, protect it. And you can power this up and crank the Variac up to whatever voltage you want. I don't have a face plate because that was printed on the, the front of the uh, plasma cutter but I want to make a decal um, or something I don't know if I want to put labels on here and I certainly don't really want to mark on there with a marker but I like to make a decal that's close so that you know where you know if 120 is right there then I want to mark that so that you know where you're at but you can look at the voltmeter and that's a pretty accurate voltmeter and if it puts out more than 10 amps then the circuit breaker will kick out protecting the Variac. Um, so that's that. I didn't make a video of building it because frankly I have I've been working on it for like two months but not continuously you know I I, uh, I put all the mounted all the stuff in the face plate and got the depth cut and then I I wired the whole thing up and tested it make sure that it worked the way I wanted and then a week or so went by and I started working on the covers 
and then something came up and I couldn't finish the covers so then you know today I finally finished the covers and painted them and, and got it all finished together put rubber feet on the bottom um, I wanted to put handles here you know a chrome loop handle so it looked more like a you know an industrial thing and I, I kinda wish the meters were the same but it doesn't matter yeah you build what you got with what you got I mean, you build what you want with what you got. And then, you know, it didn't cost me anything except for the... I had bought this a while back for a different project than I never did. You know, I was going to make a 8-channel compressor. And I didn't do it. So I thought, well, it's just about the right height for this very active fit. So that worked out good. So now what I think I want to do is I want to test a radio or something just to see how this thing works. And I'm thinking I'm going to go with the uh, Philco that I fixed the cabinet on because that's in pretty decent shape and that may power up. So I'm going to yank that chassis back out and, and uh, yeah, actually I guess I won't yank the chassis out because I need the speaker hooked up anyway. So I'll, I'll move that radio over here and maybe we'll see if we can get it to uh, do something.